Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. At least 36 people have died in wildfires sweeping through the Hawaiian island of Maui. The wildfires began on Tuesday and spread quickly, fueled by nearby Hurricane Dora. Thousands of tourists and residents have been evacuated to makeshift shelters. President Joe Biden sent his deepest condolences to the families who have lost loved ones in the fires. Oh. Officials said the winds from Hurricane Dora, hundreds of miles to the southwest, had fanned the flames across the state. Hawaii's Lieutenant Governor told a press conference officials were still assessing the damage. Uh, so the question is, what is the timeline for basically recovery? Uh, when would the schools be open? Uh, we understand one of the schools um, uh, has been damaged. Um, uh, and what is the timeline for um, getting people back to affordable housing? Uh, you know, the, uh, right now we're still in the assessment stage. We're still trying to assess the amount of damage, but the, the road to recovery will be long. A candidate in Ecuador's forthcoming presidential elections who campaigned against corruption and gangs has been shot dead at a campaign rally. Fernando Villavicencio, a member of the country's National Assembly, was attacked as he left the event in the capital Quito. He is one of the few candidates to allege links between organized crime and government officials in Ecuador. A criminal gang called Los Lobos has claimed responsibility. The gang has been involved in a number of recent deadly prison fights in which scores of inmates have been brutally killed. The US and the UN are concerned about the health and safety of Niger's elected president Mohamed Bazoum, who has spent more than two weeks under house arrest. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said he was concerned about the deplorable living conditions Mr. Bazoum and his family were in. It comes as the Economic Community of West African States, or ECOWAS, arrived for an emergency summit on the situation. With respect to um, President Bazoum, we are greatly worried about his uh, health and his personal safety and the personal safety of his family. In all of the conversations Secretary Blinken has had with President Bazoum, uh, inquiring about his uh, safety has been <coughs> one of the first things he has brought up. Um, uh, it is one of the reasons that Acting Deputy Secretary Newland wanted to see him personally uh, when she was uh, in the country on Monday, and it's a, a, a matter that remains of concern to us. An Australian journalist held in detention in China for three years as of this weekend has spoken publicly for the first time. Chung Lei said in an open letter to the people of Australia that she misses the sun and that sunlight shines through the window of her cell, but she can only stand in it for 10 hours a year. The finance reporter was working for China's state media television station when she was picked up, spending her first six months of detention in solitary confinement without charge. She is accused of passing on state secrets, something she denies. Hollywood writers have marked a hundred days of striking with contract talks stalled and people on the picket lines protesting what they described as a disregard for their demands. <laughs> The strike began after negotiations between the Writers Guild of America and the major studios reached an impasse over compensation, minimum staffing of writers' rooms, and residual payments in the streaming era. <laughs> writers also sought to regulate the use of artificial intelligence. Picketers outside Netflix said they were undeterred by the length of the strike. We can take them at their word. I think they wanted to wait us out. They wanted to starve us out. And I think they wanted us to be broken. And I think what's important to remember is that you can't break people who have already chosen a job that where we're told no 500 times a day. We chose a hard job because we're resilient and because we love it. And so they can try to starve us out all day, but it's not going to happen. As Chris Kaiser says, they cannot outlast us. And Taylor Swift, one of the world's biggest pop stars, has announced the release of her latest re-recorded album, 1989 Taylor's Version. Swift announced the release on her Instagram page, telling her fans it was her favorite re-record. The record is the fourth installment of the Taylor's Version albums. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel studios in Lagos.